एवरी वन वेलकम टू माई चैनल अनुपमा बायोलॉजी क्लासेस दिस इज द फिफ्थ लेक्चर इन द सीरीज ऑफ सेल बायोलॉजी इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट एंजाइम्स एंड दिस वीडियो इज फ्रॉम सी बी एस सी क्लास एलेवेंथ सो एट फर्स्ट सी हियर द कंटेंट्स ऑफ दिस वीडियो एंड हियर द फर्स्ट कंटेंट इज द डिस्कवरी ऑफ एंजाइम्स देन द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ एंजाइम्स देन साइट ऑफ एंजाइम एक्शन properties of enzymes mode of action of enzymes factors affecting enzyme activity nomenclature of enzymes classification of enzymes regulation of enzyme action and the last is dynamic state concept of metabolism so the first topic is what is enzymes so we know that enzymes are organic compounds necessary for the normal metabolism in the cells they are needed in small amounts these are organic compounds produced by the living cells to speed up the spontaneous biochemical reactions in and outside the cells in living organism the process of speeding up chemical reactions is called catalysis and the substance that speed up the reactions are catalyst the enzymes which are secreted by the living cells are known as biocatalyst and the study of the composition and function of the enzymes is enzymology and the specialist in enzymes is enzymologist the reactant in an enzyme catalyzed reaction are called the enzyme substrate and the substance produced in the reaction is product now the discovery of enzymes and here over 100 years ago louis pasteur a french chemist and bacteriologist found that fermenting of grape juice and souring of milk were brought about by a specific microorganism that provides enzymes for them in 1897 ewald buckner found that an extract from yeast fermented glucose like the yeast itself without living cells so the term enzyme was coined so enzymes are regulatory substances they regulate the action that means reaction formation of product from the substrate certain amount of energy is necessary to initiate any chemical reactions called activation energy or free energy of activation now the importance of enzymes and here you can see there are two uses in which the first one is biological uses and the second is industrial uses so in biological uses we know that each cell performs many chemical reactions all the time in which the first biological use in in physiology here enzymes digest food in alimentary canal of animals and the enzymes are also essential for respiration blood clotting muscle contraction nerve impulse transmission etc so if enzymes are missing it can be harmful for us second is medical diagnosis elisa elisa is a enzyme linked immunosorbent assay is used for detecting disease such as aids next is medical treatment enzyme streptokinase is used in dissolving blood clot formed inside the blood vessels next is digestive aids enzyme diastases and other are used as digestive aid in the patient with faulty digestive juices and the last is genetic engineering endonucleases ligases and many other enzymes are used in genetic engineering are enzymes next is industrial uses in which the first one is alcoholic drinks so what is the use of enzymes in alcoholic drinks enzymes obtained like zymes uh, which are obtained from the yeast is used in making alcoholic beverages by fermentation of sugary substances next is cheese enzyme renin produced from the calf's stomach is used in making cheese by coagulating milk protein that is casinogen next is detergent it contains proteases enzymes 
Next, cleaning of hides. Enzymes proteases also used for cleaning of hides and softening of meat. Next, clearing of juices. Enzymes pectinase is used for it. Next, baby food. Enzyme trypsin is added to pre-digest baby foods partially. And the last is waste treatment. It produces the enzyme urease which catalyzes the breakdown of urea into CO2 and NH3. So, after all these enzymes are also used in rating of fibers, degumming of silks, food processing and chemical synthesis also. So, these are the importance of enzymes. Now, you know that what are the sources of enzymes? From here, you can get enzymes. Enzymes are obtained from the microorganisms such as bacteria like bacillus and fungus like aspergillus. So, here you can see that the site of enzyme action. And there are two types of enzymes with regard to the site where they act, in which the first one is intracellular enzymes. So, most of the enzymes remain and function inside the cells. Some occur dissolved in the cytoplasmic matrix and certain are bonded to particles like ribosomes, mitochondria and chloroplast in the cells. Next is extracellular enzymes. Certain enzymes leave the cell and function outside them. They mainly include the digestive enzymes like salivary amylase, pancreatic lipase, gastric pepsin which are secreted by salivary gland, pancreas and gastric glands respectively. Now in this picture you can see the activation energy requirement of non-catalyzed and enzyme catalyzed reactions. Here, reactants that is glucose and oxygen absorb energy from surroundings to climb the hill of activation energy and reach the unstable transition state. Here, enzyme speeds the reaction by reducing the uphill climb to the transition state. In this state, the reactants are in an unstable condition and reaction can occur. So, the certain amount of energy is necessary to initiate any chemical reaction and this energy is known as activation energy or free energy of activation. So, this is the enzyme action which you can see in the picture with enzyme, without enzyme and the product formation. Now, the properties of enzymes. And here there are some common characteristics of enzymes which you can see in which the first one is chemical nature. The enzymes are generally complex macromolecules of globular proteins. Second is molecular weight. Molecular weight of enzymes varies from 6000 for bacterial ferredoxin to 46 lakhs for pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Next is chemical activity. Enzymes only accelerate the chemical activity or reaction. After this, changeless form. The enzymes combine temporarily with the substrate molecules but are not consumed or changed permanently in the reaction they catalyze. Next, reversibility of reaction. The enzyme controlled reactions are reversible because enzymes only affect the rate of biochemical reaction not the direction. After this, high efficiency. Most enzymes have high turnover number. So, the question is what is the turnover number? So, the turnover number is the number of molecules of a substance acted upon by one molecule of enzyme per minute. Next is action specificity. An enzyme can catalyze only a particular type of reaction or may even act on a particular substrate only. After this, temperature sensitivity. Enzymes are heat sensitive. Next, pH sensitivity. Enzyme shows maximum activity at an optimum pH that is 6 to 8. Next, teamwork. They work in the cell in form of team. Here, the product of one enzyme controls the reaction serving as the substrate for the next. 
next is destruction by poison which is the last point they are destroyed by poisons like cyanide and iodoacetic acid so these are the properties of enzymes now the mode of enzyme action and here the mode of enzyme actions are of two types in which the first one is lock and key hypothesis which is suggested by Emil Fischer in 1894 and it has two reactions in which the first is combination reaction and the second is a splitting reaction. So in combination reaction the catalytic property of the enzyme is located at specific regions on their surface called active sites or catalytic sites or active centers. In this picture you see the structure wherein an enzyme is small pockets or groups formed which holds up to acquire three dimensional form. Here the substrate have on their surface specific areas the reactive sites to precisely fit the active sites of enzyme. So the active and reactive site fit like a lock and key and form enzyme substrate complex. Now, the splitting reaction. Enzymes also split large molecules into smaller ones. Here, you can see that the enzyme molecules unite with the substrate molecule at two or more places, which you can see in the picture and holds the substrate molecule in a way that strains in molecular bond and facilitates their break. After the break, the products leave the enzyme which is reused. So here A and B shows combining reaction and C and D shows a splitting reaction. The scheme of lock and key model is summarized below. At first, the enzyme and substrate combine to form enzyme substrate complex. Now, this enzyme substrate complex forms the enzyme product complex and after this the splitting of enzyme and product complex forms enzyme and product separately. After this this enzyme reuse and the product detach and process can repeat. Now the second that is the induced fit hypothesis and it was suggested by Daniel E. Koshland and others in 1959. It includes, here is the picture, you can see the induced fit hypothesis. Here, there is an intermediate condition that is the transition state between the substrate and the products. The active site doesn't have a rigid lock and key conformation for the substrates. The induced fit is possible because of the flexibility of the protein molecules. In the unstable transition state, the enzymes pull atoms of each substrate. The product that fit the last conformation of the active sites leave the enzyme molecules. And then the detached atoms combine and leave the enzyme. So this is the induced fit hypothesis. Later is now free to receive the new set of substrate molecules. So, in this picture, there is a comparative view of both the models. So, you can compare here like the lock and key model and the induced fit model. In lock and key model, which explains the binding of perfectly matching substrate and enzyme with each other for a reaction, while induced fit explains the mechanism of enzyme substrate binding when they are no complementary in shape are with each other. Next is lock and key binding is very strong while induced fit binding is flexible. In lock and key active site is static while in induced fit active site is not static. So in many aspects induced fit model considered to be a better theory than the lock and key model. Now the subunits association with enzymes. Here in the picture you can see the active sites where the substrate binds and forms the enzyme substrate complex. 
after the reaction is splitting and the product released and the enzyme is reused many enzymes show enzymatic activity only in association with certain non protein substances that is the cofactors the enzymes that work only in the presence of cofactors are apoenzymes an organic non protein cofactor which is easily separable from the apoenzyme is coenzyme and the non protein organic cofactor that is tightly bound to and the non dissociable from the enzyme is prosthetic group a working combination of an apoenzyme and cofactor is enzyme system or holoenzyme there are certain enzymes which have slightly different molecular structure but have similar catalytic functions these are known as isoenzymes or isogenes so there are three types of cofactor which are inorganic ions phosphatic groups and coenzymes now the factors affecting enzyme activity in which the first one is enzyme concentration the rate of enzyme catalyzed reaction you can see in the picture this is the graph of a enzyme concentration here the rate of enzyme catalyzed reaction is steadily increase with an increase in the number of enzyme molecules till a saturation effect is attained now second factor is substrate concentration in the picture you can see it's a graph of a substrate concentration if there are more enzyme molecules than substrate molecules a progressive increase in the substrate molecule increases the velocity of their conversion to products however eventually the rate of reaction reaches a maximum so at this stage the active sites of all the available enzymes molecules are occupied by the substrate molecules therefore the substrate molecules occupy the active sites vacated by the products and cannot increase the rate of reaction further now in substrate concentration there is a point that is the michaelis menten constant so in an enzymatic reaction the rate of reaction is dependent on the substrate concentration this is the michaelis menten curve you can see in the picture and here at low substrate concentration the rate of reaction is proportional to the substrate concentration so the enzyme shows the saturation effect which led to michaelis and menten to a general theory of enzyme action and kinetics in 1913 so according to this theory the michaelis and menten equation is the rate equation for a one substrate enzyme catalyzed reaction this equation relates the initial reaction rate the maximum reaction rate and the initial substrate concentration through the michaelis constant came which minus a which measure the substrate binding affinity so in an enzymatic reaction here a forms p the rate of reaction is dependent on the substrate concentration and according to this the rate of formation of enzyme substrate from e plus s is given by this equation and here according to them the enzyme first react with the substrate to form the enzyme substrate complex which the breakdown to form the free energy and the product here both the steps are reversible and k1 k minus 1 k2 and k minus 2 are specific rate constants for the reaction so after the derivation we found that v0 equal to v max substrate by substrate plus k and here this is known as the michaelis menten equation and k m is michaelis menten constant and k m is equal to the substrate concentration at which the velocity of the reaction is half maximum now the importance of michaelis menten equation 
the mechanism menten equation has been used to predict the rate of product formation in enzymatic reactions for more than a century as substrate concentration increases a tipping point can be reached where an increase in the unbinding rate results in an increase rather than a decrease of the reaction rate when the reciprocal values of the enzyme activity and substrate concentrations are plotted against each other we get a straight line this double reciprocal plot is called line weaver burke plot and according to this plot it is a linear equation where 1 by v is a linear function of 1 by substrate instead of we giving being a rational function of substrate concentration it can be readily represented graphically to determine the value of k m and v maximum given the line weaver burke plot determines the v maximum of a particular enzyme so this is the line weaver burke curve and from this plot value of k m can be obtained only by extending the line towards the abscess in this picture 1 by v maximum on y intercept and minus 1 by km present on x intercept while the slope shows the km by v maximum so this is the line weaver burke curve now the product concentration accumulation of the product of enzyme reaction lowers the enzyme activity it also affects the enzyme function so normally the product are quickly removed from the site of formation and the reaction doesn't suffer next is temperature as temperature rises the effectiveness of the enzyme increases up to a certain optimum but decreases thereafter which you can see in the picture in the temperature which rises and after the optimum it start to decrease so most enzyme shows maximum activity in the temperature ranges of about 25 to 40 degree centigrade now in the temperature which you can see the rise in the temperature increases the kinetic energy of the molecule so at higher temperature an increase in number of molecules have the required activation energy and can take part in chemical reaction and according to ph some enzymes are best in the acidic medium and others in an alkaline medium for every enzyme there is an optimum ph where its action is maximum where a shift to the alkaline or acidic rapidly decreases the enzyme activity and finally it stops it which you can see in the ph where the after the optimum ph is start to decrease so in temperature and the ph in both cases after the optimum ph they started decreasing next is poisons and radiations poisons such as cyanide and radiation destroy the tertiary structure of the enzymes making them ineffective next is activators certain enzymes are produced by the living cells in an inactive form called zymogens or proenzymes they are activated usually by hydrolysis of an inhibiting fragment that masks an active site this is caused by specific enzymes or ions which are called activators and eighth is inhibitors to somehow reduce or stop the action of an enzyme is called inhibition certain chemicals limit or prevent the function of an enzyme called inhibitors they act in three different ways in which the first one is competitive inhibition this is brought about by a substance which is closely resemble the substrate in molecular structure such inhibitors are called competitive inhibitors or substrate analog now in competitive inhibitors these are used in the control of pathological bacteria and the competitive inhibitors of enzyme activity is a reversible process in this picture competitive inhibitor shows a close structure similarity to the substrate so the inhibitor competes with the substrate for the active site of the enzyme forming enzyme inhibitor complex instead of enzyme substrate complex 
Here, the enzyme inhibitor complex doesn't yield any product and remains stable. This stops further enzyme activity. So this is the competitive inhibitor. Now, the importance of competitive inhibitor. It supports the lock and key hypothesis of the enzyme actions and it shows that substances structurally similar to substrate are not metabolized by enzymes. Now, the non-competitive inhibition. This is brought about by a substance which doesn't resemble the substrate in structure. The non-competitive inhibition of an enzyme is irreversible. So, the non-competitive inhibitors, it binds to the enzyme at some site other than the substrate binding site and no product is formed. Like cyanide inhibits the mitochondrial enzyme cytochrome oxidase which is essential for the cellulose, cellular respiration. This kills the animals. So, in this picture you can compare the competitive inhibition and non-competitive. In case of competitive, at place of substrate binding site that is on active site competitive inhibitor bind so it shows the competitive because it compete with the substrate but in case of the non-competitive it's bind on the other site not on the active sites where the substrate binds so this is the main difference between the non-competitive and competitive inhibition now the allosteric inhibition Still, other inhibitors join an enzyme at a specific site and changes the form of the active site meant for the substrate called modifiers or modulators. And the sites where they fit is called allosteric sites. Changes of the active site form prevents the binding of substrate to the enzymes and stops the reaction called allosteric or allosteric inhibition. The enzymes with allosteric sites are called allosteric enzymes. The glucose is changed to glucose 6-phosphate in glycolysis with the help of enzyme hexokinase. So the glucose 6-phosphate causes allosteric inhibition of hexokinase. This is called feedback allosteric inhibition. Now in this picture you see the allosteric inhibition allosteric activation and the feedback inhibition. In allosteric inhibition, the inhibitor bind at allosteric site and alter the active site for the substrate while in allosteric activation when the activator binds it provides active site for the substrate. While in feedback inhibition on the substrate after the formation of end product act as an inhibitor and bind to the enzymes and inhibit the pathway. So this is the main difference in allosteric inhibition, activation and the feedback inhibition. Now the ninth factor that is the enzyme substrate complex and it is formed in biocatalysis the greater the affinity of the enzyme for its catalytic reaction. Now what is the cooperativity? Cooperativity in an enzyme molecules comprising two or more subunits. In this picture you can see the binding of one substrate molecule to the active side of one subunit causes all the subunit to assume their active conformation by induced fit mechanism and an interaction of the subunit of an enzyme in which a conformational changes in one subunit results in a similar change in all other subunits called cooperativity. So, in this picture you can see all the three types of inhibitions in which the non-competitive inhibition there is a substrate binding site and an inhibitor binding site both are separate. Inhibition, in case of inhibition the substrate no longer fits binding site shape because of addition of a inhibitor. So, the binding of inhibitor causes the substrate binding site to change shape so that the chemical reaction is not carried out. And when the inhibition inhibitor is not present, then the end product form. And in case of the competitive inhibition, in enzyme, the substrate binding site here, both the structure, that is the substrate and the inhibitor, are the same. 
shape because causing both of them to compete for the substrate binding site so you can see in the picture both are the same now in case of the inhibition if the inhibitor binds to the enzyme the chemical reaction which would be carried out by the enzyme doesn't happen so the reaction is not carried out as no substrate can bind while in case of no inhibition if the substrate binds to the substrate binding site instead of inhibitor the chemical reaction is carried out and the end product is produced now in end product inhibition here the allosteric site present now the substrate bindings the chemical binds for the chemical reaction and the end product form when in case of end product inhibition it occurs when the too much of the end product is created causing there to be an excess so the extra product will bind to the allosteric site changing the shape of the substrate binding site and so the substrate can no longer bind stopping the metabolic pathway so these are the main differences in the non competitive competitive and the end product inhibition now the nomenclature of the enzymes in nomenclature they are named by adding the suffix as to the root word of the substrate like sucrase li lipase proteases nucleases etc that are so that compound in an enzyme if ases are added the enzymes are also named according to the kind of reaction they catalyze like dehydrogenase which helps in dehydrogenation polymerases that aids in polymerization most recently new method is name of each enzyme consist of two pairs the first indicating in substrate and the second the reaction catalyzed like glutamate pyruvate transaminase and dna polymerases etc some enzymes have been named after their source like papain from papaya bromelain from the pineapple etc now the classification of enzymes in which there are two types of classification new classification and old classification in new classification there are six types of enzymes in which the first one is oxidoreductase here these enzymes catalyzes the oxidation reduction reaction by the transfer of hydrogen or electrons from one compound to another these includes oxidases dehydrogenases and reductases in which the first one is oxidase which bring about the oxidation of oxygen to a substrate or by removal of hydrogen or one or more electrons second is reductases it catalyzes the reduction by removing oxygen or by adding hydrogen or one or more electron so this is the known as oxido reductase now the next is transferases this catalyzes the transfer of a specific group other than hydrogen from one substrate to another like examples are hexokinases glutamate pyruvate transaminases etc third is hydrolases this catalyzes is splitting of large molecules into smaller ones by addition of water and the examples are almost all digestive enzymes lyases this catalyzes the breakage of specific covalent bonds and the removal of groups without hydrolysis and the examples are histidine decarboxylase aldolases etc next is isomerases this catalyzes the changes of a substrate into a related isomeric form by rearrangement of molecules and the example are phosphohexo isomerases next is ligases or synthetases this catalyzes the joining of two substrate molecules by getting energy from hydrolysis of atp and the example is pyruvate carboxylase so this is the modern or new world classification after this the old classification according to the old classification enzymes are classified into two groups in which the first one is hydrolyzing enzymes which split larger molecules into smaller ones and the examples are amylases lipases peptidases etc next is desmolizing enzymes that catalyze the reactions other than those involving hydrolysis and the examples are those involving oxidation and reduction and isomerization etc 
Now, the synthesis of enzymes. All enzymes are proteins. Their synthesis takes place like the protein synthesis and is controlled by genes. There is generally one gene for one enzyme. So, it is known as one gene, one enzyme hypothesis. Now, the regulation of enzyme action in which the first one is control at the enzyme level. In this, the enzyme substrate and the product themselves regulate the chemical reaction. And here, the, when the product of an enzyme reaction accumulates in the cell, it inhibits its own production of by lowering the enzyme activity. This kind of control mechanism is called feedback inhibition or negative feedback. Here in the picture, you can see here the substrate act, forms the end product which acts as an inhibition of the process. So, this is the complete view of the feedback inhibition. In this picture, a colon bacteria E. coli synthesizes the amino acid isoleucine from a substrate threonine by a series of intermediate reactions. When isolation accumulates more than required, it stops its own production by inhibiting the activity of the enzyme threonine deaminases, which catalyzes the first reaction of series. This type of metabolic control in which the first enzyme of a series inhibited by the end product called end product inhibition. So this is the feedback inhibition. After this, now the control at the gene level. In this type, the gene regulates the production of enzymes and proteins are the end products of the gene action. The gene responsible for the synthesis of enzymes is activated and inactivated by the substrate to be metabolized and the end product accumulating in excess respectively. So in the above account, we have described that the cells of living organism contain large number of inorganic and organic compounds in definite concentration. Now the dynamic state concept of metabolism in which the meaning of metabolism is the term metabolism refers to the sum of all enzymatically catalyzed taking place in the cells and tissues of the living organism. Now, the forms of metabolism in which there are two forms. First one is anabolism. It is the process by which the large complex chemical compounds, cell organelles and cell products are built up from the small. Here, the simpler compounds in the body of a living organism usually by use of energy. After the anabolism, the next is catabolism. It is the process by which the large complex chemical compounds break down into the small simple compounds in the body of a living organism, often accompanied by the liberation of energy. So, the anabolism is a constructive or building up metabolism while the catabolism is destructive or breakdown metabolism. Product of anabolism is called anabolite while the product of catabolism is called catabolite. Formation of protein from amino acids is anabolic process. So this is the example of the anabolic process while the example of catabolic process is breakdown of glycogen to carbon dioxide and water. The chemical reaction which liberates energy by the enzymatic oxidation of food stuff to carbon dioxide and water in the tissues are referred to as the energy metabolism or respiratory metabolism. So this is the end of lecture in which we know about the enzyme, factors affecting enzyme activity, properties of enzymes and uh, nomenclature of enzyme, classification of enzyme, mode of action of enzymes etc. So the next video will be on the cell cycle and the cell division so if you like this video so please like and share it and subscribe to my channel Anupma biology classes if you have any questions any queries any suggestions you can ask in the comment section below thank you for the watching